Hello, everyone. It's great that you are here. Let's start with this Zero Project Impact Transfer Forum. Uh, it's a big uh, honor, and I'm really happy to see so many uh, faces here, both of uh, innovators, of supporters, of people who are interested in innovations. This is fantastic. Congratulations, and thank you so much that you have come here. Today, uh, you will be uh, gifted by uh, 10 inspiring, uh, special, amazing social innovations and social entrepreneurs, and they have had a hard time during the last half a year. Because we have very challenging mentors, and my wish is now to give uh, an applause to all the mentors supporting our social entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. <laughs> Second, uh, there is Ashoka. Uh, 10 years ago, I have had the privilege to hand over the ESL Social Prize to Bill Drayton, the founder of Ashoka Worldwide. And since that time, we have not just a big and a huge friendship between Ashoka and uh, the ESL Foundation and Zero Project, but we are really working hard to support social entrepreneurs in the field of disability. And this is amazing, and thank you so much uh, for this inspiration we always are receiving from uh, Ashoka. And with the uh, prize money, uh, Ashoka did two things. First, to come to Austria and Central and Eastern Europe. And so far, uh, in Austria, there is a kind of regional headquarters taking care of all activities in uh, Austria and Central and Eastern Europe. And since that period of time, for just a few years, dozens of social entrepreneurs were supported so far with beautiful um, uh, innovations. And uh, three years ago, I asked um, Loic uh, to um, support the Zero Project in developing together the impact transfer uh, idea and to implement the existing Zero Project uh, uh, impact transfer idea from Ashoka into the Zero Project family. And this is what we are doing now. And as you see the fruitful uh, cooperation and therefore uh, give an applause to uh, Ashoka. Thank you so much to Loic and your team for supporting us. And there is a, a fantastic uh, lady. Uh, this is Paula Wright. Uh, Paula. <laughs> uh, she's part of, our, of, of, the, of, of the Zero Project uh, core team. Uh, and she uh, does an amazing job in coordinating you with us and with uh, Ashoka and, and to be the mom of, of, of the Zero Project Impact Transfer. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, warm-hearted and uh, brilliant work. Yes, and there are two ladies together with me uh, here on the stage, and I'm really proud. First, Nefgül. I know you since a couple of years. 2013, and Nefgül with the Sambanchi uh, uh, Foundation taking care of uh, women uh, activities for activities uh, uh, to support persons with disabilities. Uh, the Sambanchi family owns half of Turkey, you know, and they are very important, and I'm so happy that this organization takes care of innovations. 
And uh, I, I'm so happy and proud that um, Nefkil with the Sampachi Foundation is interested in implementing your ideas of the uh, innovators from the Zero Project Impact Transfer um, um, fellows uh, to come to, to, to Turkey. And I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, one or the other innovation will be real, can be realized in, in, in Turkey. And it's the same with Carola. And this is uh, uh, also a very uh, interesting uh, cooperation uh, and we signed a contract uh, uh, to work strategically together in uh, uh, organizing a um, Zero Project conference in Santiago de Chile. This will take place in June next year, uh, this year, excuse me. Uh, the workload is full and they are still working. Uh, and there are six people from the uh, Discoupreme uh, with us. And give them also a, a, a big applause, both organizations, please. Uh, and the goal of Carola is to globalize the idea and to make it really big, the idea of zero project impact transfer. Isn't that fantastic? And I'm so happy uh, that we are strengthening in, in more intensively supporting uh, our rock stars, and these are the uh, 10 entrepreneurs. They presented, uh, uh, they, they prepared the presentation for us, but it's the job of uh, Loic to uh, go with us through this uh, forum. Thank you so much for joining us. I wish you a lot of inspiration and please go in contact with these two, uh, 10 um, social entrepreneurs uh, and uh, ask them all questions you have and try to support them. They are fit for scaling up. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Loïc Van Kutsem, and indeed I work for Ashoka. Just very briefly, Ashoka is the leading network of what we call social entrepreneurs or change makers. We support over 3,600 of these change makers in over 90 countries with financial support and even more important, non-financial support. They join a community and they are supported in different ways to scale their impact. Um, and with impact transfer, that is exactly what we, what we do as well. We help these amazing change makers and their innovations to become fit or ready for transfer, for replication. And then we try to connect them with the relevant partners who could import, adapt and adopt these innovations in their local context. Um, and that is exactly what we have the pleasure and honor to be doing since now three years with uh, the Zero Project community, whereby each year we um, select 10 uh, Zero Project uh, awardees um, who are, have a proven impact and, and, and sustainable model, um, who have the potential to be replicated in different geographies and for whom it is a strategic prior priority to, to transfer their innovation. And, they are then supported during six months through trainings, through individual mentoring, visibility, matchmaking with potential partners like today, um, and, and follow-up support. Uh, the goal is really to disseminate, I mean, help them package their existing innovations um, and um, disseminate them to uh, other stakeholders like yourselves who might be interested to adapt and adopt them in your local context. So replicating rather than reinventing the wheel. Um, and so these 10 projects have been indeed working very hard over the last months um, and are ready today to present in four minutes um, their innovation and their plan for replication and also their needs. Um, before we get there, uh, we'll have a quick discussion with uh, our distinguished guests and the panelists today, which Martin already, already introduced. Um, and the first question, by Martin, goes to you maybe. So we started in, indeed three, three years ago now, this program. Um, what was for you the, the aim, or, or why, why were you willing to start this up? Yeah, since uh, 2010, uh, we have been showcasing uh, innovations in the field of disabilities uh, uh, to you, our global um, zero project um, um, community. 
And with the zero project impact transfer, we go one step further, not just to uh, the research is important for us, but also to figure out what type of innovations are really innovative, very impactful and, uh, and, and scalable. But uh, who of you, and we award uh, annually uh, about 75 um, innovations, but we select 10 out of them who really wants to uh, scale up their innovations and who are ready for this. And in this period of time, uh, um, this, um, uh, they, they, to strengthen our social entrepreneurs uh, and to prepare them for the Zero Project Conference, where we try to find solution partners, founders, fin financiers, all type of support which is needed to implement new and fresh ideas. And uh, I think this is uh, very important for us. And uh, we did also in the, uh, in the Zero Project report 2020, uh, uh, you will see also a, an, an, an old, uh, a dedicated section uh, on this uh, program where we describe what we are doing and most important, uh, stories behind these innovations so that we can uh, find uh, really the needs of person with disability and what your solution means. Thank you, Martin. And I hear, and you've already um, alluded to that, but there have been some exciting new evolutions uh, this year in the program. Can you provide us a bit more information on that? Yeah, actually, I, I, I told you before that uh, we are so um, happy that uh, Carola uh, with uh, Foundation Descubreme uh, joins us uh, in uh, strengthening the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program not just to organize a conference in Santiago, which is very important. Uh, secondly, uh, beside the organization of a, the first regional um, Zero Project Conference, uh, they are able and aware and, 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 and will do it to translate all the innovations and uh, information we uh, receive and, and we, we, we gave uh, in, in, in the English language uh, to translate it in Spanish so that we abolish barriers, language barriers to 500 million people in the world. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> and, third, and third is uh, that uh, we will be strengthened by two charming ladies now, and hopefully, as I may say, uh, beside uh, Loic, of course, as so we are two and two years. <laughs> uh, but beside, uh, my goal is uh, that every year we will have an other str a, a further strategic partner who wants to support the Zero Project Impact Transfer and really uh, uh, support uh, realizing uh, uh, these uh, beautiful innovations, I can tell you. We have now, since uh, three years, 31 prepared innovators, and they are waiting for you as a foundation, uh, for foundations and, and financiers. Please uh, take, uh, 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 use these opportunities, talk to us, and Loic and I will be happy to talk uh, about the possibilities we can offer and give to you to strengthen uh, this uh, activity of Zero Project Impact Transfer. Thank you, Martin. And indeed, it is very exciting. The goal of the program is not only to support each year 10 solutions, but of course to build an ecosystem for replication and mobilize as many partners as possible, of course. So it's very exciting to have these partners on board. Carola um, from Fundacion Descubreme in Chile, would you like maybe to explain a bit more your experience within the program um, so far? Hi, everyone. Uh, when Martin approached us and um, we discussed that uh, we would like to replicate Zero, zero Project in, for the Spanish speakers, he mentioned, you know what? Yeah, we can do it. But the most important thing should be impact transfer. That was three years ago. 
Uh, and when we had the chance two years ago to know more in depth what impact transfer was able to do to every single organization who was um, applying for, a, um, of was introducing an, 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 a social innovation, we realized that because we discovered it, we believe that the knowledge should be worthwhile. This was the best way to help us as an organization, how to express our experience, our know-how, how we have done things. And we, we thought that that was the best investment that we were able to do. Uh, to be part of this year of the program, because for, uh, personally I have been two years a part of the program, uh, I realized that uh, this is beyond zero project. We need to be able to transfer, impact transfer methodology to almost every social institution worldwide. Because our biggest barrier is to let others know what we know. And the best thing to do is to be effective in the way that we communicate what we have done. And that was what we, we learned from impact transfer. I have been so grateful uh, in knowing every single uh, best practice and policies, not only for this year, but for the previous year. And I still in touch with some of them because in order to choose the 10, the most the, the 10 that we will be working with, we need to review every single application. And the, the know-how, the information that uh, we can receive just reading and um, reviewing videos is a wonderful experience. So for us, it has a blessing, as I mentioned to you before, Martin. And um, we will do our best. And our commitment is to be with uh, at least four years and because we believe that this is the way that we should be doing things. Thank you very mm. much. Thank you, Carolyn. Nevgul, you are the managing director of the Sabanshi Foundation in Turkey, as Martin mentioned, and you've also been supporting this program in different ways. And among others, you have replicated one of the solutions from previous years from Galode University mm. in Turkey. Can you share a bit more your experience? Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Actually, it's really great feelings to be in the Zero Project every year. We've been active since 2013. So this conference, attending it, gives you a lot of connection and networking facility. So um, we've been organizing our own conference since last 12 years. And for the last two years, we have started to use our connections and experience through the Zero Project conferences in Turkey, in Istanbul. When we first two years ago met Galude University here, we also invited them to our conference. That's how our relations started here. Then they came to Turkey. They were part of the impact transfer program. And we helped them meeting their colleagues in Turkey. They met the Association for People with Hearing Impairment. And they started to exchange know-how. They talked to each other. They, they had their own sessions to see whether they can collaborate. And after agreeing with each other that there is a potential for collaboration, they together applied to our grant program. And through the grant program, now they are actively working on the replication of the project that Galude University is having, which is a storybook app for children with hearing disabilities. The same story will be translated into Turkish, and on top of it, a Turkish story will be added to the app as an add-on from our side. And it will help children developing their cognitive skills. There are so little materials in Turkey for children with hearing disabilities. So it will help them for their create, 
activity, for social skills. And this way, the project is ongoing. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we will have it completed, and it will be our first completed replication. Mm. <laughs> this year, we are also looking forward to listen to the next 10 new projects so that maybe we can have another one for replication in our programs. Fantastic. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Indeed. A great example of how all of us can somehow contribute to replicating these projects through disseminating them, connecting them, implementing them, funding them. There are different roles that all of us can play and that we will be exploring. We will close the panel uh, with here and, and, and start introducing the 10 solutions. Thank you very much to all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so just making a bit more room for the... Great. Good, so as promised now, we're going to listen to the 10 solutions. They come from nine different countries and cover a vast spectrum of innovations in the field of inclusive education. Um, they have four minutes each to present. Um, and um, this is an opportunity for you. You should all have on your tables, or in your bags even, but definitely on your tables, uh, a so-called support card that looks like this. So the invitation for you is really to listen carefully to these 10 different presentations and reflect on how you could potentially be of any support in replicating these innovations. All right, so you have the opportunity on these cards to select the projects that seem most relevant to your field of work. And on the other side, you can suggest different types of support and simply hand in the cards um, back to the project owners or to us after this session or throughout the three days of the conference uh, at the Impact Transfer exhibition space, where all 10 projects can also be visited and, and conversations can continue there as well. All right, so without further ado, we will then get started with the 10 presentations. Um, and to get started, I will invite... I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Um, so I should tell you a joke while they're trying to fix the slides. Um, <laughs> not too sure. Um, can we... It works? Okay, perfect then. Well, no joke, sorry for that. <laughs> um, so I'll welcome Ayesha Husaini from Manzil in UAE as our first speaker. Welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I need to start my presentation with a slight clarification. I am not standing here before you today as the founder of Manzil, but in fact, uh, in the capacity of a humble spokesman for Nelifer. So let me leave the stage to Nelifer. Hi, I am Nilapur. I was the first student of Manzil. Mummy and Papa could not find a good school for me and my brother. I wanted to come to Vienna to tell you my story. But now, I am very busy because I work in a bank. So, I have sent Dr. Aisha to tell you about my journey. How I found my destination, my Manzil. Thank you. Thank you, Nilifa. I, I hope I can get uh, do justice for you trusting me to bring this very important message to the audience. So, ladies and gentlemen, like Nilifa said, in the United Arab Emirates, the big social problem that we face is that 80% of people with disabilities are unemployed. Now, this happens because people with disabilities often do not have the skill sets that are required for employment. And also that is in turn because vocational training centers that are giving these trainings are not attuned with the market needs. The other side is that employers are also unsupported. 
And so this gap between employer and employee continues to widen. Our program slide, our pride, comes in with an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, a student as young as four years of age can go into the academic program, then into the vocational training program, and then they move into the employment program, which includes the recruitment, the onboarding, uh, you know, post-employment support. Our academic programs were not only the first to be internationally accredited programs in the entire Gulf region, but we were also the first people uh, outside of the UK to be uh, certified by the UK government to provide as leaders to train employers on how to have inclusive workplace environments. We have a very robust uh, progress tracking mechanism and through that we ensure that people who are being placed by us do not just have paid jobs but have career paths making them financially independent. Besides the value that we bring to people with disabilities, there's another stakeholder that I would like to bring your attention to, and that is the funder. An independent study that was done on the impact and the, measure, the measurement of impact and social return on investment showed that for every dollar that was invested, there was a social return of 1.64, which is not just higher than the UAE average, but also uh, higher than the international average. Hence, 60,000 people were impacted during the course of the study of about four years. And that was one of the biggest things was the deep dive that the program went into. For example, for every student that we placed in the mainstream workforce, at an average, we are training around 206 people around them, the co-workers, to ensure that the program becomes sustainable. It is no wonder that 92% of our candidates who have been placed in over the last 13 years have been able to retain their jobs. So what next? We are trying to upscale our programs and now uh, Pride, like I said, is a very, very vast program. So we've come up with shorter vocational training courses, which we would like to take to other places and help existing vocational training centers to upgrade their skills. We are also looking for funders to, for de demand creation through a mindset change to ensure that uh, the employers realize that it is not just feasible to employ a person with disability, but also mutually beneficial. We are also looking for funding, seed funding for our consultancy program and hoping that we can then turn, uh, you know, target at least 100 companies to ensure that we get workplace environment uh, becomes more inclusive. Where would we like to go? Yes, we are already in the UAE. We would like to spread further in the region. So we want to go to other parts of the Middle East. But with our multicultural staff, we are also able to do our consultancy work and tie up with other organizations in India, Turkey, in parts of uh, Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are looking for funders. We are looking for government who would like to bring inclusion into their region so that people like Nilofer can live with independence, dignity, and pride. pride. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ayesha. And from UAE, we will travel now to Senegal. And please join me in welcoming Vieux Insa Sané from Humanité and Inclusion in Senegal. Good morning. My name is Bill Ensa Sane, and I work for Humanity and Inclusion in Senegal. On the picture, you can see Marem and me. Marem is on my right. Marem is deaf, and she is enrolled for the first time in a mainstream school at two, at, in 2000, and she has uh, 10 years old. Three years later, Marem is the best student of her class, proving that deaf children can learn 
in mainstream school. I will present you the inclusive mechanism we use to school Marem. So what about the social problem? In Senegal, there are one half million of children who are out of, out of school. And then third of them are children with disabilities. For that children, this situation is made worse because they cannot enroll in mainstream school. There are few specialized schools and there are private, expensive, and located in the capital city. Then, uh, many people believe that children with disability should learn in special school. Instead, we know that they, they can learn with other children in inclusive school responding to their individual needs and adequate support. Our solution, developing an holistic mechanism with school life assistant at the center. This school life assistant will support deaf children with identification and monitoring, deaf parent children with coaching parents association, and uh, teachers with support in the classroom. We have four pillars. To achieve official inclusion for deaf children to access and succeed in mainstream school. First, identification and school enrollment of children. Two, official recognition of school life assistant role. Three, parents' advocacy at national level. And four, introducing of introduction of training modules in teacher training curricula. Our success in just three years. For the first time ever in Senegal, we enrolled 61 deaf children in four mainstream schools. We developed a replicable mechanism and piloted it successfully in two districts. We want to replicate in other districts in Senegal and support the institutionalization by the Ministry of Education and in other countries by supporting ministries and other NGO partners to design and implement the mechanism to school deaf children with consultancy and work. What we need is the support from ministry and NGOs interest in replication of the mechanism, private co-founding for new pilots, and ICT partners to introduce digital, digitalization and improve process. Please help us to give an education to thousands of children like Marem. Thank you. Thank you, Vyoinsa. Um, next, please join me in welcoming Irene Barikirika from Enable in Kenya. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Zero Project and Ashoka, for this uh, platform. Um, my name is Irene Barikirika, uh, the founder and executive director of Enable. So today I'll share with you our story about the Computer Labs for the Blind program. So back in 2008, I had the privilege of meeting an ambitious, exciting, happy group of kids. The only difference is that they were blind and low vision. And one thing I got to discover is that they actually don't get the digital skills that are necessary for them to become independent, necessary for them to actually be able to continue with their education, to access information, as well as get into employment. Some of the things that I discovered include um, an over-reliance on Braille. So it's something that goes on in Africa. Braille is a very important tool, but the reality is that we are not able to afford Braille. A good example, a textbook in Africa in, in print 
is maybe $5. The same book in Braille will be $50. So it's almost 10 times the cost. So you'll rarely find a school student who has all the books they need for their grade level. Another challenge I found, that's a picture of a girl. She's totally blind. She's holding a print Oxford dictionary. That's the same dictionary that's right next to her, but it's in 26 volumes. So for me, I had to find a solution that actually helps such a child, because at the end of the day, she'll never take this book home. At the same time, I got to discover, because they graduate from high school with Braille skills, but they join a world that's completely oblivious to Braille. So there has to be a solution that can help. At the end of the day, they get into begging and prostitution for survival because you'll never find them in the job market. And then I tried to connect this with the kids I met and I knew we had to do something. So with that, I was able to get my friends to donate $3,400 and Enable was born with a mission to empower the blind and visually impaired youth in Africa through technology. And how we do this is we started off by partnering with a local Thika Primary School for the Blind in Kenya, where we partnered and established assistive technology labs, and we had 100 students enrolled. First forward 2019, we, uh, 2019, 2020, we've established um, assistive technology labs in six schools for the blind in Kenya. We've enrolled more than 7,700 students and provided more than 35,000 hours of assistive technology computer skills training. What we do is pretty simple. We teach the students how to use the devices and the technology that we bring into the market. They have to learn what the hardware is, what the software is, and all the application. Once they learn that, they become free and you can bring in all the apps you want to bring after that. You can bring in all the digital textbooks. But if you skip the training, then there'll be a problem. So this is Nancy. We have a number of kids on our program who are extremely confident and uh, they're unstoppable. They actually participate in the coding program. So from basic computer skills to coding. So She's one of the students, and what you find is they sort of become extremely confident, and when their parents come to see them, the parents also are perplexed by what their kids can do. And that's important because if you change the mindset of the parents and the community in general, then that means they begin to look at these students as an asset instead of a liability. So they become a really good investment for most of us. So I'm here today, having said that, we only started off with $3,400. It's been a struggle for the last 12 years. So I'm really grateful to be standing here and have people listening to what we are talking about. So what we would like to ask for today is for your support to help us replicate this project across Africa. Because I do believe any, child, any blind or low vision student who's going to school in Africa should have access to technology and training. So Definitely, we need your support if you're a partner and you're sitting here and you have programs in Africa. An important part partner is also governments because we work in schools. It's important to work with uh, local partners and governments to be able to design a program that works for your country. At the same time, we need funders. This is a capital intensive project and we need your contribution and support. So this is a really simple project when you come across it, but it's very, very complex to implement. So I ask you to please join us and help us change the way we look at blind and low vision students in Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irene. We'll take one more project before we'll allow you two minutes to reflect on what you've heard and perhaps start filling in your support cards. Um, and we'll come back to Germany with Nils Wopke and his colleague Felix from Capito MV. Welcome. Yes, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, we are very happy to greet you from here and to inspire you about our museum project. My colleague Felix Jedling and me, Niels Röpke, will now inform you about this. And our project is actually about training museum guides with special needs and make them professionals. We come from Capito, which is a social franchise network in the German-speaking countries and is going for accessibility. So I would like to start uh, with the essence of our project and uh, would ask you 
to remember your last museum visit. Just please think about it um, and yeah, get some contact with that and uh, feel were you comfortable in the museum? Um, did you understand the information? Uh, how was your contact with the staff? Okay, I can't get your individual answers now, but um, we know by capito, by proof, and by the persons with special needs that there are actually a lot of physical and informational barriers that are the root causes for museum exclusion for so many groups, like the blind people, the deaf people, or people with disabilities, like learning uh, disabilities. But we also have a good solution for that um, to solve this problem. And you can see here in the picture in front of the museum in Schwerin in northern Germany, the State Museum, where we educated people with special needs as museum guides to work in a museum. We have had seven museum guides so far. Felix is one of them. And they have gone through a three-year course of manual where they were qualified and now um, guided over 500 people uh, with their information and perspectives. And of course, this, we are very convinced, could then help museums and their staff to get more aware of um, the needs of people with disabilities and what are the needs for disabilities is so good for the whole society. And so museums could change actually to a museum, a place for all which is very important for democracy and society, we think. So we are spreading out actually and are heading out for three major target groups. And these target groups are of course people with special needs, the museums and the visitors and so far non-visitors. With our activities, we educate people with special needs to become professional museum guides and uh, of course the impact of that would be that they get labor contracts and get professional work in museums. The museums themselves would offer the job contract and the staff gets in touch with people with disabilities and special needs in everyday life. So they get sensitive for that. Um, and the visitors and non-visitors, um, they will get easy to understand information and will reach the exhibition and would get new perspectives on arts. So this would actually increase the people that visit museums and we are convinced by our project that we reach non-visitors that haven't visited the museum so far. So now I would like to take over to my colleague Felix and um, he will share his experience about the project and how it changed his life. Felix. I have been with Capito for three years. Since then I have become more and more confident. It's getting easier for me to speak in front of a lot of people. And it's, and it's make me very happy when I can make people interest. With the project, I have gotten a new whole understanding of art, which interests me very much and brings me a lot of fun. It's changed my life and I want, and I want to become professional museum's guide. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Felix, uh, for sharing this information. Actually, you inspired me to visit museums because I haven't visited museums in a long period before, and I, I'm very excited about museums and their exhibitions right now. So this is uh, yeah, a success from Felix, actually, and his colleagues. But now we would like to share our experience with so many more museums here in Germany, Austria, German-speaking countries, and overall in other countries. So we would like to replicate now. And we do this by a train-the-trainer concept. Um, so people 
coaches would actually educate people with special needs. And for this, we developed a manual with um, nine modules and um, 48 learning units. And uh, from this point on now, we would develop learning materials that are accessible in easy to read and understand language and also with the audio function. And uh, we also offer as a inclusive museum academy now coaching seminars and workshops for museum and other culture institutions in order to make action plans to make the management changement for a museum for all. So how would we like to do this? We are looking for social investors who would strengthen our resources in order to make the materials. We want to reach so many more museums that are employing the guides and make the same experience. We need trainers for education in that places. And the most important things, we want to get people with special needs who are interested in getting professional museum guides. And when we reach this, uh, we are convinced that we will get a totally different museum landscape in Germany, Austria, and all the other places in the world. So we would be very proud and thankful to share this experience with you within the next three days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so as mentioned, we would now offer you two minutes uh, pause to kind of reflect on these four first projects that you have heard um, and look at your support card and perhaps put down any ideas you might have of how you could potentially support these ideas um, in your own context, in your own work. Okay, so we're taking two minutes before we move on to the next round of projects. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We hope your cards are already half full. Uh, we'll move on to Petra Rantamaki from KVPS in Finland. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Petra Rantamäki. I'm from Finland, from an organization called KVPS, the Service Foundation for People with an Intellectual Disability. And I'm today here presenting you our On the Verge of the Adulthood project. Imagine that this is the story of your life. It is written by someone else. It's written by many others. It tells you uh, what you cannot cannot do in your life, what you cannot achieve. It tells you who, who, with who you are going to live with in the future. Uh, and you are not have to say anything about it. You are not listened, you are not heard. Imagine that you are a young person with a disability and uh, it's your life. And imagine that you are on the verge of the adulthood and this is the service and support system that is around you. This is the picture of Mr. Jyrki Pinoma, who is here in the audience. And so you can see it, it's difficult. These professionals are there to help you, but they aren't actually working together. They don't know you. They don't know each other. So it is very complex situation for the young person and for the family. So this was the problem in Finland. And I guess that in many other countries also, the little bit similar system. So our, our solution for that is the on the verge of the adulthood model. It's a transition training program for young persons on the verge of the adulthood and their families. 
It leads to individual plans, and we believe that uh, individual plans lead to independent living and uh, your future. But it's not only person-centered planning as such. It's also a stakeholder management system that is coordinating the support around you. And we believe that uh, doing this, it also develops the service system as a whole because new and innovative services are being developed. And what's the best part? It is using the existing resources in the community. So teachers, social workers, therapists, NGOs, all of those who are around the person. So the person is in the middle. So it's a six steps, one year approximately program uh, that is supporting the transition and it connects the young persons, families and professionals. The most important part of it is that it's holistic. So we are not just looking of the housing opportunities. We are not just uh, thinking of dreams and wishes. It's very concrete planning and results. It's about making choices. It, uh, it's about relationships. We cannot live without other people around us. It's about independent living. It's about housing opportunities. It's about studies and employment. Very important part of our, all of our life and also lesser time. This is Elli's story. My name is Elli. I'm 17 years old girl from Finland. Before on the, uh, on the verge of the adulthood program, I had a lot of questions like, what should I study? What is my dream job? Where do I want to live? Me and my family worked with local services, the school, church and KVPS to find answers to my questions. We got peer support and made new friends. Through the program, my family and I have felt more in charge of the process and are more aware of different things, for example, housing issues. And today I'm happy to tell you that Ellie is actually studying in vocational studies, and uh, so it was a successful program for her. So what we offer and what's our replication strategy? This program has been a success in Finland since 2013, but KVPS, our organization, has over 25 years of experience in supporting families in times of transition. We already have the proven metho methodology. We have a toolkit, um, and it's open source, so it's not for profit. And of course, we have the expertise of our development team, and uh, so we are here to mentor and develop the program further with you. We are looking for partnerships for replication. So schools, secondary schools, vocational studies, uh, to, to develop the model in, in different countries, in Europe and perhaps somewhere else. We are looking for families associations. We cannot do it without the young people and their families. Um, we are looking for service providers in disability services to develop new innovative services around people. And if there are any universities present, we would also love to make case studies um, in the future in, in Europe. So thank you for this opportunity and thank you for listening. Thank you for Sero and Ashoka. Uh, we are here for you to tell you more about and hopefully uh, you got interested in it. Thank you. Thank you, Petra from KVPS. And we'll now travel from Finland all the way to India with Prashi Deo from the Naidisha Resource Center. Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Prachi Dev and I'm the founder and executive director of Naidisha Resource Center, a not-for-profit based in India. I'm going to talk about one of the most neglected stakeholders in this entire system of disabilities, which is parents, the primary caregivers. So four minutes, like Four minutes, right? Four minutes is what it takes to shatter the dream of a young parent who's told that her daughter has Down syndrome. 
Thereby begins the arduous journey of lifelong care. The incessant search for non-existing cures, sleepless nights, isolation, unwarranted advice from friends and family, insensitive remarks from neighbors. And it is at least four times a day that every parent thinks, what would happen to my daughter after me? This is not just the story of Sandhya. This is the story of 31 million parents in India who have children with similar conditions. Not only are these conditions inherently complex, but the society we live in make it even harder. Overburdened health and education systems fail to cater to the needs of parents, and they are left running pillar to post in search of information. Nai Disha was formed with the very intent of supporting these parents, providing them with handholding, and to help them help their children. Because we believe that parents are the primary change agents in the lives of their children. Any success story that you hear, there is always this parent who left no stone unturned. So to do this, we have an online platform where we provide these three services. One, we have evidence-based information resources across disabilities, for across life stages, starting with child development, adolescence, adulthood, in easy to understand fashion as infographics, audios, videos. Two, we have a directory of services so that parents can find anyone and everyone they need. So it could be a pediatric neurologist, it could be a school, and it could be a swimming coach. Three, we have parent community for peer support where parents can exchange information and find mutual support. The beauty of this is that parents like Sandhya can find anything they need on a single platform. Now with a country like India where I come from, we know that not everyone is at the same level of digital literacy. And that is where we also conduct workshops, support group meets, and we have printed material for parents. Starting with 10 parents, 50 providers, five articles published, we have come a long way. We have more than 800 parents visiting our website, even from smaller towns. We have supported 5,000 families so far with our services. But the beauty of this, what we are really proud of, is the community that we have developed and the ecosystem for parents. We now have doctors referring parents to Naidisha. We have therapists, educators collaborating with us to create more material. And we have parents like Sandhya, who are not just becoming change agents for their own children, but they're also becoming champions of Naidisha. They're mentoring new parents. They're organizing support group meets. They're pointing parents to the right resources. So our goal is to become the digital destination of India, and we know we can do it only by replicating communities. We have already replicated these communities in major towns of India, major cities like Bombay, Pune, Bangalore, after Hyderabad. But now we, what really we want to do is replicate these communities in smaller towns in the Hindi-speaking states of India. We are already converting our resources in Hindi. We are developing a multilingual platform. So that is our priority one. And priority two is we want to help our neighboring countries which speak similar language and have the same culture. We have, since day one, we have seen ourselves as facilitators, and we know we cannot do it alone. So to do so, we are looking for local NGOs who are willing to partner with us. We are looking at corporates who are willing to adopt communities. We are looking at government bodies because you alone have the last mile reach. And of course, we are looking for funders who are willing to support this program for three to five years. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and this especially is true for a child with disability. So join us, partner us with us to form this village. Me and my colleague Ambika will be here to speak to you if you would like to know more about our work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prachi, from Naidisha Resource Center. Next, from Bulgaria, we we'll have Lili and Lilia from Ella. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, just a second. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Lilia Rakcheva, and this is my colleague, uh, Lilia Krstvapeva. We come from Bulgaria, from the Association for Shared Learning, Kela, and we are presenting the Model 1 School for All. Hello, 
everyone. Thank you for being with us today. And thank you to the Zero Project lead and team. Um, what is the social problem that the Program One School for All is trying to tackle? Will you agree that although the educational system has legislation on inclusive education, negative attitudes towards inclusion still persist? And that there is lack of understanding who is responsible to promote and to make inclusion in the school happen. We have witnessed as a consequence of these problems in Bulgaria, school teams that are demotivated and stressed. They want to be more inclusive. They want to uh, advance inclusion in the school, but they don't know how. And in the end, we have an educational system that fails to provide equal opportunities and quality education and participation for all children. Uh, very often, the problem has been solved with more and more trainings. And as we have heard this morning from the World Bank, we still hope for the inclusion to happen in the school. Throughout the last six years, we have been wondering in partnership with our schools in Bulgaria, and we have been searching for more sustainable solution. This is how we came up with the understanding that the school should be looked at as a system with the processes that goes throughout all the levels and in all areas of the school development. And we need to see the teachers and the school principals as the change agents of the school itself. This is our systematic approach. And we will go to tell you more how it works now. Uh, this is why we have developed the Model One School for All with the support of schools and academics. So it supports the school teams to organize their work into four main uh, areas of development. School leadership, teaching practices, child safeguarding and partnership with parents. And we already know that uh, the school has to have the ownership of this change in order to make it sustainable. And this change must come from inside out. This is why we offer to them this approach and we are starting with the self-assessment of the school. Uh, we give to them uh, an instrument which helps them to see the problems in these four areas and to organize their work and to find solutions throughout the school year. We support them in making activity plans and after they implement these plans. And uh, at the end of the school year, they are becoming more inclusive. So we provide mentorship support and trainings to the teachers. These are some of our results. Uh, so um, our schools have become more responsible in implementing inclusive education. And uh, we have more teachers who use multi-sensory approach in their work. And they're more able to invite parents as partners of the school. We already work in 15 schools in Bulgaria and in nine other schools in other EU countries and want to transfer our success and our methodology in other EU countries and outside as well. And we can do it in three options. The first one is introduction of providing the key instruments. The second one is capacity building and we provide train of trainers. And the third one is train of trainers and ongoing mentorship support. So we are uh, really uh, looking for committed partner organizations who can be either NGOs or business organizations with good connections to schools and who have already experience in working with schools. And we are also looking for funding opportunities. So if you really want to support the schools in your country and to make them more inclusive, please contact us. We will be very happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, One School for All from Bulgaria. And now we have a surprise for you. Before we go to the three last projects, um, we will take a 
brief pause, we have Connie van der Hakis, who participated in our program last year with her organization Danceability, which is all about inclusive dancing. And she offers us a two minute inclusive dance moment. Thank you, Connie. Good afternoon. This participatory commercial break is being brought to you by Danceability International with 600 teachers in 35 countries. I'm gonna ask you to get comfortable in your seat. If you're in the outside road with a roller, you might wanna roll out a little bit into the aisle. Um, you may stand if you've been sitting too long and you want an opportunity to stand and and move around from a standing position, but make yourself comfortable in your seat. Okay. And here we go. I want you all to relax and find your breath. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Your feet are grounded by the earth, and your breath goes to the air. Our bodies breathe, our whole bodies breathe. So as you're breathing, you're sensing your body, all the little aches and pains that you may have from sitting too long. Maybe you had a long walk and your feet hurt a little bit because these are new shoes that you're wearing. Maybe your neck has a little tension because you've been presenting all morning. Or maybe you just have a little headache because you've been listening all morning. Just pay attention to the sensations in your body. And now, as you pay attention to the sensations in your body, I'd like you to move one part of your body in a very small and direct way. Just feeling the sensation of that one body part moving. Very small, paying attention to how it's moving. And now begin with that body part to add more dynamics, to make it bigger. And as you make it bigger, I would like you to simultaneously Sense what's happening in your body and notice the others in the room. Are there movements that you see that you might want to try out? Are they moving in a dynamic way that your body hasn't sensed in that way? And now come to a stillness and a shape that you've been moving in. And we always say, find a stillness, whatever stillness means to you. And drop down. OK, we're going to do that again. We're going to use our whole body. And now I'm going to ask you to begin to move your body in a seated position, in a standing position, however you'd like, one body part at a time, adding body parts as we go can be very small, very big. Let's start slow, and then we'll add some dynamics. So just moving one body part, and then letting it flow into another body part. And as you begin to sense your own body moving, open your sensation to what else is happening in the room. And this is why we call shopping. Look for movements, qualities that other people are doing that you might want to try on your body. And this time, I'm going to ask you to deliberately find someone in the room and replicate their shape so they know it. Right? You're really making a connection with that person in the room. And make that movement really bigger so they understand that you're trying to connect with them. Yes, beautiful. And slowly come to stillness. 
whatever stillness means to you, and relax. Thank you. Thank you very much, Connie. That was beautiful. Next, we have our last three projects for today. And next on stage, I'd like to invite Shanka from Amasava Sangam. Welcome. Hello. Good afternoon, all. I am Shanka Sahiraj from Amasava Sangam. You can see the photos that our president, Mr. Ramakrishnan, and Mr. Shankar Raman, he is our secretary. Last month, he received the India's prestigious award, Padma Shri Award, from the president for his service. And secretary is our uh, chartered accountant. He's a gold medalist. Unfortunately, they are not able to reach here. Yes, this is our today's scenario. And this should not happen in future. So. We brought a solution for the early intervention that we are going to discuss here. The child disability is a global health issue. Majority of the people are living in Asia and Africa. And in India, around 1.2 million children are living with developmental disability. And the major issue for early intervention is access of knowledge and accessibility and lack of resource people in the rural community and the financial issues. Our app enables community workers to provide high quality care through remote specialist support. So what we are doing, we are identifying the children through a screening method with the non-rehabilitation professionals. Then we are planning and providing therapy and the therapy is provided at their home by the mother, supported by the CRW, and monitored by the specialist. And every six months, we are evaluating their changes, progression. And based on their progression, we are modifying the treatment. So all these things can be connected by our application. And it's not only finding the progression of the child, we can track all the staff's activity, where they are located, how long they are providing therapy, how long they are traveling. So it provides a high fidelity program here. And using this modern technology, our program, reaching the children at their doorsteps, enables community workers to connect with the specialists and parents, and provides individual care to real time on, with the mobile technology. And our model has a high impact and highly scalable and at a low cost. That's important at $290 per child per year. And this, these are the highest, impact, highly impactful reports. And the engagement is 87 percentage. We can see the school enrollment, it's 85 percentage. And the caregiver strain is reduced a lot. And already we scaled in India, and now we are ready to scale up to the other places. Our expectations, this model to national as well as the global level, and we have two scaling models. One is the individual model, the other one is the institutional model. What we offer, software application platform, training modules with manuals, monitoring and evaluation mechanisms, and implementation support. Individual model, we can subsidize the amount and through which we can offer a therapy who cannot pay. And in the institutional model, we need local implementers and funding agencies. Through them, we can now provide a free service in low middle income countries. And we reached around 5,000 children with development disabilities in the 52.9 million population. And we need your hands to support this program. We need you as local implementers and distributors. Thank you. Thank you, Shanka. And we'll end in Latin America with the two last projects. And I'd like to invite Victoria Parker from Universidad Andres Beo.
Hello, I'm Victoria Parker from Universidad Andrés Bello in Santiago de Chile. I'm very pleased to be here uh, sharing our program with you. Fourteen years ago, we tackled an important problem in Chile. There was no vocational program for people with intellectual disabilities in a university setting. The situation was detrimental for their self-esteem and life project because different barriers could have forced them to be useless after secondary education. They couldn't work because they were not prepared. In brief, the lack of a suitable program specially designed for them was the gap we expected to fill, aiming to achieve their real and effective inclusion um, through participation in labor market. Our solution is a three-year social labor training program for people um, for people with intellectual disabilities within a university setting, which offers them the opportunity to pursue studies in a university level. The training process consists of three stages, comprehensive training, personalized work training, and a three-term internship in regular organizations. This program trains them to become assistants in different areas, as shown in the, in the slide, um, and based on their interests and abilities. Some examples, gastronomy, office administration, veterinary. Through this program, we foster labor skills and comprehensive development, and in consequence, improve their life quality. Up to now, 501 students and families have benefited from our program. Students have to pay, to pay fees to participate. Scholarships can be granted based on uh, donations for those who can't pay. Also, through our cooperation with companies, we can raise awareness of inclusion and um, of inclusion in the job market. Some important facts that verify our impact are 83% of students feels included in the university community. 63% of graduates are working. 40% of graduates are even working for five years or more in the same companies. 94% of employers perceive our graduates' job performance as satisfactory. Also, the model has been replicated successfully in three universities around the world, Universidad de La Coruña in Spain, Universidad Católica de Buenos Aires in Argentina, and Universidad de Anahuac in Mexico. What can we offer? We can share our inclusive um, educational model based on equity. This model comprehends personalized education and curriculum adaptations specially designed for their uh, intellectual profile and, and pace of learning, cognitively accessible methodologies, multidisciplinary support, special protocols to manage, to manage students' behavior and learning difficulties, among others. Where we expect to replicate this model in any countries with similar job training needs. How we are willing to share our program uh, through partnerships and alliances, and, where, and with uh, higher education organizations that aim to, uh, to develop inclusive cultures in their communities. We don't talk about inclusion, we just do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria. Last but not least, we'll invite Carlos Pereira from Livox International in Brazil. Welcome, Carlos. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carlos Pereira, and I'm the CEO and founder of Livox. I would like to start by asking to you guys, do you believe in love at first sight? Because actually, I do. This is a photo of my daughter when she was born uh, 12 years ago. Her name is Clara. 
And because of, because of a medical mistake during my wife's labor, she had cerebral palsy. So at this moment, she was in an ICU, and this was the first moment that I had the opportunity to, to hold her. And I remember that she was like looking at me and maybe thinking, Dad, you're the coolest person I've ever, I have ever met. <laughs> Probably I was one of the few she has ever met. But anyway, um, I, I, already know, I already knew that she had a brain damage, but I didn't know if she, was, she would be able to talk, to walk, or to understand something in the future. But I had this deep commitment towards her, to help her in any way that I could. And in order to help her, we did many things. And eventually, she has grown, and she can't walk, and she can't speak. I remember when I, when I took my daughter to school, I, there are over 300 million people like Clara. These are people that are nonverbal. And the worst kind of prison is your own body. And when I took her to school, they gave her a device like this. These are regular alternative communication devices. There are dozens of items on a single screen, uh, and many of us here don't have any motor or cogn cognitive disability. Good luck if you want to say that you, want, you need to go to the restroom or you need a glass of water using a device like this. It's overwhelming, it's complicated to use, and it's a, a standalone uh, solution. So that's why I, I, I decided to do something to help my daughter. And in order to help her, I created Livox. What is Livox? Livox actually is not just one thing. Uh, the guys are taking photos for me for my Facebook, please. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. So what is Livox? Actually, Livox is three things. It's not just one thing, it's three things. First is a unique communication software that runs on tablet, tablets. Second is a community of users creating content curated by us. And third, a portal with essential data for educational managers. Let me tell you how it works. First, let's, let's talk about the unique alternative communication software. Uh, actually, I was reading an interview of Stephen Hawking, and he was telling that he was a, when he was alive, he was a very lonely person because people were not willing to wait until he could answer. And that's true for any alternative communication device. It takes a long time to either initiate a conversation or to answer a question. How do you solve this in Livox? You can actually talk to the person with disability, just like Siri or, um, or Google Assistant, and you activate it by saying the name of the person with disability. So I can say something like, Clara, my daughter's name, Livox starts listening. How many spoons of sugar do you want in your coffee? Livox understands that, and then it shows the numbers so she can say, I would like two spoons of sugar. Or maybe in her school, a teacher was reading a book and, and she said, Clara, Livox starts listening. Is this book about a dog, a cat, or a rabbit? Livox understands that, and then it shows dog, cat, and rabbit. There is no need to memorize these questions. We use natural language processing to understand what you're trying to say and to help people with disabilities to answer. But Livox goes beyond that. Uh, we have hundreds of different algorithms to make Livox work with a wide range of disabilities. And one of my favorites is related to touch. People with motor disabilities, they don't touch on a device like we do. They touch with the whole hand, they drag their fingers, they do involuntary touches. And in order to solve that, we created an algorithm called Livox IntelliTouch, that the moment a person with disability touches the screen of the device, Livox knows that something is different, and then it corrects automatically their imperfect touch. We have algorithms for cognitive, visual disorders, and many others. But second, many of our users, they started creating content and sharing among themselves. And that's why we decided to create a community so other users could discover what was being created. And that's how uh, a Livox community was born, where users can create any kind of content. Livox goes beyond just alternative communication. And there are lots of educational and recreational content created by parents, professionals, and teachers. And regardless of the disability, even if the person has a visual, motor, or cognitive disability, they will be able to access this content. And if you have a Livox, you can just download this content on your device. But uh, in order to engage all the actors, uh, there is a need to engage uh, educational managers. And, and we created what we call Livox Portal, where we have data for these professionals with dashboards that shows user usage improvement over time. For example, this is a real data here uh, from one user. And uh, as you can see in the beginning, of the, the beginning of the year, the cognition for this user was only 20%. 
uh, and the overall score was only 48%. Then the, the teacher can drill down and say, hey, wait a second, cognition is too low. So let's work a little bit to increase cognition so we can increase the overall score of this student. This is very useful so parents and professionals can understand the real needs of people with disabilities and see how they're improving over time. And we evaluate each user in five different categories. Our replication plan, we did this before, okay? We are present now in 10 countries. Livox has 25,000 users and is available in 25 languages. So we are looking for partners to uh, replicate this process of selling Livox licenses to governments, institutions, and families of people with disabilities. And how we wanna do that? We want partners for joint venture or distribution contracts. And uh, the way that we want to do this is, where we want to do this is in English, Spanish-speaking Spanish countries. And now, this is my first time in Austria, and I have, I've been falling in love with this country. So we would love to use Austria as a beginning to spread to the rest of Europe. And we would like to have partners uh, who, has, who have strong sales record in education or uh, health areas. Our needs, as I said, we are looking for these kinds of partners, but we are also looking for funding if it's smart money, and pilot sponsorships are also welcome. Guys, thank you so much, and I would like you guys later to look, at, to look for me, and this is my contact info. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you've heard from 10 solutions. I hope you found inspiration or ideas or contacts or ways to perhaps support them or to benefit from their solution or expand it with your own expertise and knowledge. Um, so now there's an opportunity for those who wish to remain during, I think we still have 15, 20 minutes, to remain in the room and perhaps connect directly with the project. Or, of course, throughout the three days, you're more than welcome to join the Impact Transfer exhibition space at the end, at the last corner, uh, after the coffee space, and just connect with these projects, learn more, and explore collaboration opportunities. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the projects, and congratulations, and to the mentors, Paula, and the whole group. Thank you.